American officials are urging Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to use federal powers to end the blockade of key border crossings. That includes, of course, the Ambassador Bridge in Windsor. Protests there are wreaking havoc on the auto industry. On top of that, there are concerns about copycat convoys in the U.S. this weekend. With more on all of this, let's bring in our Washington Bureau Chief Jackson Prosco. Jackson, great to see you. We appreciate you doing this. Let's begin with the White House's response. What are they saying about the Canadian protest? And I'm curious, and a lot of Canadians, I, I think, are curious of what they mean by the federal powers. Yeah, good morning to you, Anthony. The White House says they are watching this situation very, very closely because, of course, they are deeply concerned about the impact that the border blockade in particular is having on the American auto sector. We know that just as in Canada, several U.S. auto manufacturing plants in the States have had to shutter production of certain lines simply because the parts that they need, that just-in-time delivery, is not happening right now because of the blockade at the Ambassador Bridge at Detroit and Windsor. So that is their primary focus right now. And in a statement to Global News last night, the White House confirms that several cabinet level officials from the American side spoke with their Canadian counterparts. And as you mentioned, they are urging Prime Minister Trudeau and his cabinet colleagues to use their federal powers. That seems to suggest uh, whether that is an RCMP or military operation, some sort of federal response to open the border because the border would be considered a national level asset. We should also point out that in their statement to Global News, the White House officials say that any Canadian action would be supported by the equivalent agencies on the U.S. side. That would be the Department of Transportation and Department of Homeland Security. And if you read between the lines there, Anthony, what they seem to be suggesting is that if there were any sort of similar blockade of border crossings on the American side, there wouldn't be any tolerance for it, that American federal agencies would be ready to respond and shut that down. Interesting angle on that story because so many people are just holding their breath right now waiting to see how this will uh, be resolved if it's uh, anytime soon. But we're also seeing, I mean, we're not just talking about the Ambassador Bridge and other border crossings, but also the potential for copycat convoy demonstrations in the United States. What are you hearing? I think what stands out about the Ottawa protest in particular to an American audience is its effectiveness, right? It was just a very small group that was able to bring a city centre to a shutdown. And that's why we're seeing some organisers here in the US try to replicate that in the United States. Now, there's sort of a, 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 an aspirational movement at this point, I would call it, to try and get some sort of convoy going that could start with disruptions at the Super Bowl this Sunday in California and then make its way here to Washington, D.C. with the goal of arriving here and gridlocking the city for March 1st. Why March 1st? That's the date that President Joe Biden is set to drive from the White House here to the Capitol building behind me to deliver the State of the Union address. And so it seems like a copycat convoy would be aimed at disrupting that and causing significant pain for the Biden administration. But we have to point out it is strictly aspirational at this point. And the Department of Homeland Security says while they are surging additional resources to California for the Super Bowl this weekend, they're monitoring a convoy, but those additional resources would be there anyway because the Super Bowl is such a huge security event. So it doesn't seem like it's firmed up just yet, Anthony, but certainly American truck drivers and the American right are talking about doing something in this country. So more on that, I mean, obviously this has caught the attention of Canadians everywhere. And of course, this is all we're talking about in the news. But how is it being covered, if at all, in the American media? It depends who you're watching. Uh, most news networks are covering it up straight, uh, explaining what is happening in Canada, why these protests are taking place. But conservative media outlets, outlets like Fox News and One America News and Newsmax, almost seem to be cheering on the idea of a similar protest taking place in the United States. They're not really contextualizing what's happening in Canada as being a relatively small number of people that are participating in this. They're certainly not mentioning the fact that the vast, vast, vast majority of Canadian truck, truck drivers are both vaccinated and still working. And I think what stands out is that they are really talking about this in terms of lifting mandates in the United States that simply do not exist. So really, Anthony, depends who you're watching for how much context you're getting. But it certainly seems like the Canadian protests have sought to inspire American, American conservatives to undertake something similar here. That's such a complex issue and a political hot potato on, all, on both sides, really. Jackson, we appreciate the update. That is Jackson Prosco joining us from Washington. Thank you.